everyone. We have some fill in the blank notes to do today to kind of introduce the rock cycle. So attached to this, you should see some notes with a big triangle in the middle of it, and we are going to fill those in. So let's focus on the rock cycle. The first thing I want you guys to do before we get started is to watch this video. Okay, so there's a link to a YouTube video that I want you guys to watch, and then I need you to come back to this, and I'm gonna kind of walk you through the notes, but the video will kind of introduce you to the rock cycle. So watch that video, and then we're gonna come back here and continue to go through the notes. So take a moment, watch the video, and then let's come back here. All right, so let's get started. First, over on the right-hand side of your notes, you will see where it says examples. So there are three types of rocks, just like the video said, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. We are going to go ahead and fill in um, a few examples of these rocks, and some of these should sound familiar to you. They are a lot of the rocks we did in our rock scavenger hunt. So a good example of some sedimentary rocks are shale, limestone, and conglomerate. Okay, we are going to get into more detail about what each of these mean, but if you can just fill in in your notes about the examples shale, limestone, and conglomerate. Next, we have some metamorphic rock. Some examples of metamorphic rocks are gneiss, that's how you say that word with the G, gneiss, marble, and schist. Okay, those are three different types of metamorphic rocks. And then our last type of rock is igneous rock. Igneous rock examples are pumice, obsidian, and granite. So add those to your notes. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started talking about the rock cycle. But to make sure we understand what's happening with the rock cycle, we're going to have to review the formation of sediments, which we have spent a lot of time on, but we're gonna quickly review it on the top left-hand side of your notes. So the formation of sediments. There is a blank there that says, is the creation of smaller pieces of rock through physical or chemical means. We know that that is weathering. So in that first blank, let's put weathering. Okay, now the next one talks about is the moving of sediments. And so we know that's erosion, so go ahead and fill in erosion. And then last it says is the settling out of the sediment. And so we know that as deposition. So in your notes, you should have those three definitions filled in. Now, below it, there's a spot that has uh, two words, something and something, is the process by which sediment is squeezed and glued together into a new rock. So in that blank, we actually want to write compaction and cementation, okay? So that those two spaces are meant to say compaction and cementation, as it says down here at the bottom of these notes. But I need for you guys right above that to write this word lithification. Okay, lithification is basically a big fancy word that means compaction and cementation. Okay, but this big word lithification is the vocabulary word I need you guys to understand. So while there's the two blanks that say compaction and cementation, please write lithification above that because that's the word you guys are going to see in the future. We will talk about compaction and cementation, but lithification is the word we will also use to describe what's happening. So go ahead and fill in lithification, compaction, and cementation, and understand that this is a process where the sediment is squeezed and squished together and it's glued and it kind of forms a new rock. So that is going to lead us into filling in this big triangle in the middle of our notes. So let's go ahead and start at the top circle, okay? It says rock. 
I need you to fill in the word igneous on top of that. Okay, so you need to write igneous in that top circle at the top of the triangle it says igneous rock. So write in the word igneous and then we're going to talk about how igneous rocks are formed. So basically it's created from the cooling and solidification of magma. So you can see I just have a picture representing some magma spewing out and to the water and it's eventually going to cool and solidify and that's going to create an igneous rock. So the solidification of magma or lava is going to create an igneous rock. Now you guys might be aware the definition of these two words is that magma is what it's called when it is still in the earth's crust. Once it comes out of the earth's crust it makes lava. So when it cools, when the lava cools, it makes igneous rock on top of the Earth's crust. Now, sometimes it comes, the uh, magma comes up, but doesn't make it all the way out, in which case it cools within the Earth's crust still, and that is when the magma cools. Okay, and that's called an intrusive igneous rock, which we will get into a little bit more later. But igneous rocks also form crystals, and the rock crystals, their size is going to depend on how quickly it cools. So if you want to take a guess, look at these crystals. This is a human man standing next to these crystals, okay? So it depends on how quickly it cools. So you can imagine that in order to form a crystal of this size, it must cool relatively slow. Okay, so the slower the cooling process, the bigger crystals you get. So if it cools really quickly, it's going to have smaller crystals. So uh, these crystals that cool very, very slowly are going to create very big crystals. So make sure you have that stuff filled in your notes. And then we are now going to move to the bottom right corner. Okay, the bottom right corner of the notes. And we're going to write in metamorphic. Again, it just has the big word rock. I need you to fill in metamorphic. So the bottom right corner. Okay, so we've already filled in the top part of our triangle with igneous rock. We're now moving down here to the bottom right corner and we're going to write metamorphic rock. Okay, now metamorphic rock is when an existing rock, a rock that's already existing, um, all of a sudden it is subjected to very, very high heat and pressure. Okay, this very, very intense heat and pressure is going to be what creates the metamorphic rock. And guys, this usually takes place underground. Okay, that's where we're getting all the heat and pressure from. Okay, and if you remember from our plate tectonics information, uh, this is happening a lot at those subduction zones where this uh, ocean crust is getting pushed under the continental crust. And so a lot of heat and pressure is being applied to this already existing rock. And so it's going to turn into what we call a metamorphic rock. Okay, so those notes should be filled in. So now we're going to move to the bottom left part of our triangle. So we filled in the top. We just now filled in this information about metamorphic rock. So let's move to this bottom left side and we're going to fill that in with sedimentary rock. All right, so sedimentary rock. So this is why we learned about weathering, erosion, and deposition because it plays a big role. Sedimentary rock is created from the deposition of sediments. So those little pieces that are broken off get deposited and set down. And then it starts to form layers over long periods of time. And in sedimentary rock is where you can often find fossils. So you can see there's a fossil in this rock right here. 
Okay, so sedimentary rocks are formed from the deposits of sediments um, and it forms in these layers and then fossils are found in there as well. So within your notes, you should now have all three of those circles filled in. But if you notice, we have these arrows all around um, that leads us around the rock cycle because again a rock cycle is a process that continues around and around so in the middle you can see that it says any type of rock can become another type given the right condition so we're going to look at what happens and how any rock can turn into any other rock so it is important to understand this so we're going to start at the top of igneous and we're going to slide down to metamorphic so see the arrow that leads from igneous to metamorphic. In order to take an igneous rock and change it into a metamorphic rock, there must be a lot of heat and pressure. So in that arrow that leads from igneous to metamorphic on your notes, please write in heat and pressure. In order to create a metamorphic rock, you must have heat and pressure. Now, once you already have a metamorphic rock, and you want to change your metamorphic rock into a sedimentary rock, guess what you need? Wed, weathering, erosion, and deposition. Okay, so in the arrow that leads from metamorphic over to sedimentary, go ahead and just write wed, as long as you remember that wed means weathering, erosion, and deposition. Okay, so now that we have a sedimentary rock, Let's turn it back into the igneous rock. So in order to take the sedimentary rock that has been made um, from this weathering, erosion, and deposition, if we want to turn it into an igneous rock, we need to melt it. Okay, so we need to melt. Okay. Now, this might be a confusing idea, but what happens when you melt something? When you melt something, you take something that is a solid and turn it into a liquid, like when you melt an ice cube. So that's what we're doing. We're taking this solid sedimentary rock and we're melting it down into this uh, magma or lava, which will then cool and turn into the igneous rock. Okay, because as we learned in our notes, it's the cooling of this magma and lava that makes the igneous rock. So first we have to take our sedimentary rock that's a solid and we have to melt it to turn it into this liquid, which will then cool and turn into an igneous rock. Okay, so now we should have filled in all of our arrows that are kind of heading around to the right. We went from igneous to metamorphic by adding heat and pressure. And then we went from metamorphic to sedimentary using wed. And then we went from sedimentary to igneous by melting. So now let's go in the other direction. Because again, we can create anything from anything. So let's look in the other arrows. Let's start up here from igneous to sedimentary. Okay, if we're going to go from igneous to sedimentary. So we're going to head this way this time. So igneous from sedimentary, so in the arrows on the notes that points from igneous to sedimentary, if we're going to take this igneous rock and make it into a sedimentary rock again, we need wed. We need to create some weathering, erosion, and deposition. Okay, so the only way we ever get a sedimentary rock is through weathering, erosion, and deposition. If you look at the arrow we added before, from metamorphic to sedimentary, you can see we got a sedimentary rock from weathering, erosion, and deposition. An igneous rock, weathering, erosion, and deposition, makes a sedimentary rock. Now, in order to go from our sedimentary rock to our metamorphic rock, we must add heat and pressure. Okay, so anytime we're making a metamorphic rock, heat and pressure are involved. So now sedimentary to metamorphic equals heat and pressure. Igneous to metamorphic equals heat and pressure. So last, we're going to take metamorphic and turn it back into an igneous rock. 
anytime we want to get an igneous rock, we have to melt. Okay, so now the arrow that's pointing from metamorphic to igneous that's going up should say melting. So again, if you guys look at these arrows, what you have to understand is all arrows that point to sedimentary rock happens because of weathering, erosion, or deposition. You can have weathering, erosion, and deposition of an igneous rock or a metamorphic rock. Both can turn into a sedimentary rock through the process of weathering, erosion, and deposition. Anytime we want to create a metamorphic rock, there has to be heat and pressure. An igneous rock or a sedimentary rock, both when you add heat and pressure, will end up as a metamorphic rock. And then an igneous rock, you can take a sedimentary rock or a metamorphic rock and melt it and you will end up with an igneous rock. Okay, so all arrows to igneous pointing towards igneous should say melting, all arrows pointing to metamorphic should say heat and pressure, and all arrows pointing to sedimentary rock should say wed, weathering, erosion, and deposition. All right, guys, so that should fill in all of the notes. You should have a fairly good understanding of this rock cycle of going from igneous to metamorphic to sedimentary and sedimentary to igneous to metamorphic and sedimentary to metamorphic to igneous, and it can just go around and around. So make sure you have these notes filled in, and we will uh, continue to do some more rock cycle activities later in the week. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.